Section 7.5 is awesome. I'm a water person. I study water and, and even studying biology for the many years before I started focusing on water itself. Water was the environment in which living cells work. So it's just amazing. Water is such an amazing thing in so many different ways. And this section brings out a lot of the physics details um, that give evidence to its amazing properties. Okay, so as we as you read that section, there's all sorts of different cool specifics there, but all of it can be summarized with this idea here that water molecules can form hydrogen bonds, and other molecules can as well, but the structure of water, its geometric structure with its angle that it's got with the two hydrogens um, and then its positive and negative sides, um, allows it to form various geometric structures to maximize the number of bonds it can make. Okay, but um, in making a hydrogen bond, it does lower the energy, which is uh, favorable. That leads to a lowering of the free energy. But every time you form a hydrogen bond, it decreases the ability to take on different states. And so it also decreases the entropy which that's a problem because a decrease in entropy means with this minus sign an increase in free energy and so the way water spontaneously forms shapes or flows or whatever it does spontaneously it depends on um, its interaction with the environment and so it could it could have an increase in free energy overall as long as the environment it's interacting with has a greater decrease in the free energy. Um, but even in a system that's isolated, um, the, the whatever spontaneous can only be, can only decrease. So the free energy can only decrease, okay? Um, and so that, that governs whether or not it's going to follow more of an, uh, an energy decrease by making H bonds or it's going to um, uh, choose confirmations where it increases the entropy at restricting the ability to form H bonds. So there's a variety of different examples. And so they're you know, like small molecules. Well, for a small molecule, um, the, the water can interact with a lot of water molecules and it's, it's, it's not broken up that much. So it can create a heck of a lot of um, of the hydrogen bonds, which would um, then decrease the energy quite a bit without too much loss because they can still kind of wiggle around while quickly forming and you know, breaking and forming those bonds. And so the entropy um, stays, stays pretty large. And so small molecules can be uh, – um, um, uh, uh, sorry, word's skipping me right now. Um, so they're soluble, sorry. <laughs> Uh, small molecules are soluble decently in water. Now, um, it also depends on the type of molecule, which we'll get to in a second. Now, large molecules, on the other hand, even if they're even if they're soluble, they are restricting the way the water can form, and so it it uh, forces a geometry onto it. Now, in particular, if you think about the surface of water, like so, a pond or top of a, a beaker. Um, the free energy in that case, there's a large geometric um, boundary condition or, or constraint. And so because of that, um, it imposes a significant um, uh, uh, geometrical restriction, which then causes the entropy to decrease a lot, which would generally be unfavorable, which implies something else has to be there to make it spontaneous and natural. And that's for like a pond or a beaker full of water, that's the gravitational force that's low, lowering the gravitational potential energy. Okay, so that would be included in that energy. Okay, so it matters on the size of the molecule. Another thing is that if the molecule is polar, well, that means that the water molecule doesn't have to arrange itself in a particular way because it could it could point its polar um, polar side to the to the molecule, and so it's not restricted to point in a specific way around the molecule. And so in this case, you can form a lot of um, the hydrogen bonds um, while also allowing um, different different geometries, which allows a greater entropy. 
Now, in non-polar molecules, the opposite of that, um, it, the, the hydrogen or the water molecule has to have a certain orientation around the non-polar molecule, and therefore there's less less positions available, and therefore uh, that has a huge entropic penalty. The entropy um, goes down quite a bit, and therefore the free energy goes up, and the the number of bonds that were able to be made are still still low. So that's not favorable. What that means is non-polar molecules aren't very soluble. So that's why they come out of the water, so that the water can try and minimize its free energy. So it's, it's an entropy or energy-driven free energy reduction that makes things soluble or non-soluble. Okay, now, if you combine things like non-polar molecule and a large molecule, um, you'll see that a large non-polar molecule is much less soluble than a small non-polar molecule because it's proportional to the surface area and how many hydrogen bonds you're disrupting and how much geometry you're imposing onto it. And so all those things together um, allow for a lot of really cool um, uh, shapes and, and, and interactions to happen, um, not just with single molecules, but in the, the, um, the assembly of macroscopic um, objects like vesicles or even cell membranes. Um, and we, that, that's what we call self-assembly. Uh, where because of this free energy reduction, either through an energetic um, reduction or an entropic increase, um, you can create different structures um, so that try to minimize the amount of interactions. And so a word that's used in the reading is a hydrophobic interaction. And hydrophobicity really is an entropic idea. Um, it's the idea that the molecules um, can't, can't make as many shapes as they want to because the the hydrogen bond um, or the, the the polar interaction, the hydrogen interaction can't be near the non-polar molecule, so it reduces the number of orientations and therefore increases the entropy, and that's what hyd hydrophobicity is. And so things will form like vesicles, micelles, um, and lipid bilayers will form spontaneously to increase the entropy, decrease the energy, and ultimately decrease the free energy.